Miss Minchin struck the door open with a blow of her hand. She was pale herself, but it was with rage. She looked from the frightened faces to the banquet table, and from the banquet table to the last flicker of the burnt paper in the grate. I have been suspecting something of this sort, she exclaimed, but I did not dream of such audacity. Miss Minchin strode over to Becky and boxed her ears. You impudent creature, she said. You leave the house in the morning. Sarah stood quite still, her eyes growing larger, her face paler. Ermengarde burst into tears. Oh, don't send her away, she sobbed. My aunt sent me the hamper. We're only having a party. So I see, said Miss Minchin, witheringly, with the Princess Sarah at the head of the table. She stamped her foot at Becky. Go to your attic, she commanded, and Becky stole away, her face hidden in her apron, her shoulders shaking. Then it was Sarah's turn again. I will attend to you tomorrow. You shall have neither breakfast, dinner, nor supper. I have not had either dinner or supper today, Miss Minchin, said Sarah, rather faintly. Then all the better. You will have something to remember. Something she saw in Sarah's grave, fixed gaze at this moment made her turn on her fiercely. What are you thinking of, she demanded. Why do you look at me like that? I was wondering, answered Sarah. What were you wondering? There was no pertness in Sarah's manner. It was only sad and quiet. I was wondering, she said in a low voice, what my papa would say if he knew where I am tonight.